go. Good morning and welcome back to Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. Hi, I'm Tom Matthews. This morning we're talking about precision pricing and why that's important and why it's a key tool for us in our business and helping our sellers. So precision pricing is a, is a term that we've come up with on, on our own for our own process for uh, dialing down into the value of properties as well as strategizing with their position. So Tom, you wanna talk about kind of the big three and where to start from there? Yeah, so one of the lessons that we've learned during our 17 years working together is we have to know what the consumers are looking at. So we always look at the value of realtor.com redfin.com and zillow.com to see what values buyers and even the sellers that we're meeting with are looking at for a benchmark for their property. And we want to just kind of have that baseline. And what we then see is that most of our um, competitors use computer-based models. Uh, probably the most popular is cloud-based uh, CMA, which means comparative market analysis. And basically what they do is they input the subject properties information, select the comparable properties that they wanna use in their analysis, and then hit a button and let the computer spit out data. But we find that that is not much different than Realtor.com, Zillow, and Redfin and doesn't dive deep enough. You know, we like to use both our experience and the fact that, you know, I'm on the board of assessors in Concord Mass, I'm the chair currently, and Joanne and I each do independent analyses of people's homes, then talk about it and then present it. So Joanne, you want to dive a little bit into the precision pricing and what we go through? Yeah, so what we try to do is pinpoint several different uh, data sets that can lead us to what we call an anchor price. And so what we look at is a number of different facets of the, of the homes in the market. And we like to use the term relevant rather than comparable. We don't live in an area where we have, you know, large gated communities with six different types of, you know, floor plans. So where one house to the next in a town like Concord is different, we have to really, really dive into what's relevant and what's relevant in the location. So we've come up with our own, we call it the sales matrix. And if people are interested in that part of the data, we love to go through the statistical analysis and how we kind of work backwards from what buyer behavior has been in the past to then make a really solid prediction for how buyers will behave in the future. So part of the matrix is pricing, timing, absorption, um, and, 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 and length of time on the market to help us to make a, an educated prediction of how the market will react when a particular home comes to the market at a particular price. And I was telling people yesterday on a Zoom call that in the last 36 months, uh, statistically speaking, Joanne and I have uh, listed homes that have sold for 102% of our original asking price. And the reason that's important is that when people interview realtors, they typically ask them to do a pricing analysis and they typically interview anywhere between one to three brokers. And those prices can range all over the map. And you wanna have a sense of whether the price someone's giving you is accurate. Because Joanne and I had a really unique experience uh, back in September with a client named Ann in Lexington. And Joanne, I'd love you, for you to share that story about what made that experience so unique. Yeah, so, so she was like any other good homeowner doing her research and interviewing several agents. And so I, I went in and, and met with her. We did our sales matrix. Um, I felt very comfortable and confident with the pricing model that I came up with and the, and the statistical prediction, predictions that I made for how buyers would behave when the, when the house came to the market. Um, but something that came up before she engaged with hiring us was she said that there was a, a large disparagement between our price and the price of another agent that she was heavily considering. Um, and she felt that our, that our pricing was far too high. 
And she, she really had a goal of selling the house in a quick time frame um, because she already had her exit strategy in place. So what we did was we went through the numbers with her and um, showed her how we came up with the calculations that we, that we did and really helped her to be in the driver's seat. And for somebody like this particular client, she was, has not been in the market for many years. She raised a family in her home and um, you know, she really needed to feel like she was the expert and could make a decision. So it was really easy with our methodology using our sales matrix to really dial into the numbers and show her how we arrived at, at our decision for pricing. And then it helped her to analyze the information that she was given from the other agent to understand where the home uh, was priced from their perspective. So yeah. ultimately, we put the house on the market. What happened, Tom? Well, I mean, I want to just, I'm a numbers guy, so I'd like to dive into the numbers a little bit more for our, for our audience. And, and the numbers were that we thought the home would sell for around 1.6 million. And the other agent thought the home would sell for around one, around one three, if my memory serves me right. So this was an old Queen Anne type of property, uh, Victorian. People have been in it for 50 years. And one of the things that helps to separate us from working with Sotheby's is that we have taken countless courses on the profile of the buyer who purchases homes. And one of the things that we know is that antique properties are owned by people with high, high levels of education, professors, writers, doctors. So, so knowing that profile, it gave us a little bit of a distinct advantage because the other agent was thinking this home needs to be renovated. The only buyer for it is a builder and therefore a builder needs margin in order to make money on the other side. So we decided to hedge ourselves and we priced it at 1575. Four days after we came on the market, we got an offer for $75,000 over the asking price with no contingencies from a high level educated buyer who wanted to restore the beautiful property. And for our client, that money was a game changer. That was inheritance that she felt she could leave to her children and her grandchildren. You know, for Joanne and I, we, we, we get paid on a settlement fee. It's a percentage of the sale. The difference of fifty dollars to $100,000 does not make a huge difference to us. But because we are committed to the client, that kind of money is, is game-changing. And she was thrilled with the outcome. Right, Joanne? Yeah, and I think that having having a good plan that is statistically backed is the best way to approach pricing. And that's why our precision pricing, we started doing this uh, back in 2009, really, is when we came up with the precision pricing. And the market is obviously very different than it was then, but it's becoming very, very important to position and anchor your house at the adequate price in order to get the experience that you want when you're selling. Because <clears throat> part of our approach is we want the experience to be as satisfying as the final sale price. And in order to do that, you have to look at a lot of different statistics to be able to, to confidently know how the market will react. Yeah. I think that was a great, great segment, Joanne. Thank you for your time today. So I wanna thank everyone for listening. I'm Tom Matthews. I'm Joanne Toronto. We're the Tom and Joanne team. Take care.